Welcome to Courtside Moms. I'm your host, Wendy Sparks. Today, I have the awesome opportunity to speak with Mary Turner, the mother of Miles Turner of the Indiana Pacers. A fun fact about Miles, he is still the U18 FIBA shot block record holder. We'll learn more about him from his mom. So let's welcome her on the show. All right, Mary, so welcome to the show, and thank you for giving us uh, your time and, and to come on and speak about your son, Miles. Thank you. I appreciate it. So let's talk about Miles. He was a very tall child and a teen. So mm-hmm. from one mother to another, did you have an issue with uh, finding some clothes for him? I did. We had, um, it was hard to find clothes, it was hard to find shoes, and it was, yeah, he was really generic for a while, you know, um, just t-shirts and jeans for a long time, and then even the shoes were, you know, everybody had Jordans, and he could never fit into the Jordans in the right way, so, you know, it was hard. I feel you. It was the same thing with my son, too. He moved from Canada and went to the U.S., and Mm -hmm. he used to tell me all the time, all the kids are dressed in these name brands, and, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't have, it's different for me, and I'm like, I cannot find your size, so. (laughs) I'm nowhere, so I feel you. So, So, Miles is about to enter his sixth season in the NBA, but Mm -hmm. let's take it back to the beginning and talk about where it all began. Sure. Well, it really began, of course, um, he was really young because he was tall from a very young age. And so it really kind of began at like the YMCA level. Okay. And, um, you know, I don't, at our YMCA, you had to wear wristband, wristbands. You can only go against the person that matched your wristband. Right. So that was not, it wasn't fun for Miles because he kept blocking everybody and, you know, he was just so much bigger than everybody else. And um, he kind of knew basketball because my husband had really kind of started grooming him early in basketball. So he knew that he was supposed to do certain things. So that kind of stopped him because he had to stick with that one kid that matched the armband. So anyways, yeah, so he started in at the YMCA. And of course, he started in some of the city um, leagues after that. It was it was pretty cool. It was nice. And he played uh, AAU as well? Yeah, he played AAU. Um, he played for a couple of different teams. Um, but yeah, he definitely played AAU. And, and, you know, that's just like every player that age. He was going through growing pains and during that age. So he didn't know what position. Well, he always knew that he was a big. So he knew he was trying, you know, going to do that. But he didn't He didn't actually like being tall. He, he wanted to stop at Michael Jordan's height, right. you know. Cause he wanted to play like Michael Jordan, but you know, he kept getting bigger and bigger. So yeah, definitely. It's funny you say that. Cause it's so common, I guess for me, cause that was the same thing with my son too. He played as well at the YMCA. And then after a while he was like, it's no fun for me because right. he was the only kid that was so tall mm-hmm. and all the other kids, you know what I mean? They just, they just weren't as tall. I mean, at that time, he must have been like what five eleven, and he was just way yeah, bigger than yeah. all the other kids. So it just, yeah. it just wasn't fun for him yeah, at the well, beginning. And then, and then he came out of it. And then he played something yeah. else. And then yeah. later on in life, he came to it. But so, where did he play AAU? He played for, um, and like I said, a couple of different leagues. He played for um, Texas Select. Um, that was with uh, Sean Williams uh, ran Texas Texas Select, so that was one of the main um, places that he played. And also, he played before Texas Select. He played for Higher Goals, um, which was um, yeah, like that was the first real select team that he played with. And what about high school? Um, he went to Trinity Euless. Mm-hmm. Um, loved it. I mean, it's basic. It's before him. It was basically a football school. So um, it was pretty fun watching um, the school go from, of course, it was always going to be a football school, but, you know, kind of, it was fun watching them, you know, finally get a little bit of recognition for basketball too. So, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good that Miles is the one that started that for that school because not every school really has like a specific sport where they have a recognized program and it just takes one, one talent that can come in and build that program moving forward. Yeah. And it was, it was pretty cool because like, um, when he was being, um, when all the other, when the colleges were trying to recruit him, like every coach in the country came to the school and it was kind of exciting for the school. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. It was nice. So what age did he break his ankle? And were you afraid that that would hurt his chances of being recruited? You know what? Um, let me see. I, I believe he was 16 when he broke his ankle. Um, 
and uh, that no we weren't afraid that it was going to hurt his chances of you know being recruited because when we for, when Miles first started playing basketball and we were hoping for recruitment our biggest thing was that he college was paid for you right. know that was our biggest thing we 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 really never thought that it was going to be that um that you know he was number two in the country um to be uh, he was the number two recruit in the country at the time and um that just came to us like it kind of went quick you know, I mean, because after his ankle injury, he recovered so well. After the recovery, he just, boom, he just, um, just, you know, he grew a little bit more and he just came onto the scene and people were like, we never heard of him. We never, you know, who is this guy? We never heard of him. But he actually, um, yeah, that was, yeah. So our main goal was, was actually just to get him a college education. But then that's when we really, I mean, my husband saw it from the very beginning. You know, it's different for me. I'm, I'm just he's my kid, you know, yeah. and I, and he's, and he's great at everything, you know, so, <laughs> of <right>? course. <laughs> but my husband was like, nah, he's, he's really got it. So, um, and, and actually right before he broke his ankle, he was going through a time of, cause he'd been going through this for so long. He was kind of going through a time of, ah, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't know if I want to do this anymore because it had really started. But then after the recovery, he really found his love for basketball again. So really? yeah, it's crazy. Well, as a senior, he started getting uh, more and more recognized mm -hmm. by many schools, and he received over 60 letters. But do yeah. you remember receiving that first one? Yeah, I do. Um, I don't remember who it was, because I'm just, my memory's not that great, it's been so <laughs> much. But um, I, you know what? I, it it could have been from um, Northwestern. Maybe it was one of the schools um, oh, um, in the North. But anyways, the, uh, I do remember it, because like, Every it started out with every call, every letter Miles got. I we made him read it, and you know we really made him kind of take it in. But then all the letters started coming in so much, you know. And then like the schools would send two or three, three or four letters, and I'm like, okay, let me yeah. give you a break. <laughs> you don't have to read every one of them. But, it's overwhelming, yeah. eh, to get all those yeah, letters. It became yeah, it became overwhelming. I now. mean, it's it's great because as a parent, you're like, oh my goodness, all these schools want my child. But yeah. at the same time, it's so overwhelming because it's it's new. Yeah. Like, well, and it became to the point where, like, all the coaches and the assistant coaches were calling. I mean, they would call at all hours of the night. Of the night, they would just call, and so we basically had to tell all the coaches. We personally told all the coaches that you can only call Miles Friday, Saturday, and just a couple of hours on Sunday. Because, you know, Monday through Thursday, he had schoolwork. So don't call Monday through Thursday, right. you know. So, um, you know, Miles was a really good, was a really good student. I mean, he was an, uh, a, an honor student. And really, I mean, he could have gotten a scholarship on um, just like an education scholarship, you know, right. or if he wanted to. So we were really proud of that. And we wanted to keep him that way, you know. With so many offers that came in, how did you as a family filter through them and narrow the choice down to your preferred schools? So what we did is that um, we really tried to make sure that this was a decision Miles made. We really tried to stick to that. I mean, of course, I had my, you know, I, I, I wanted him to stay in Texas. And I, I thought the University of Texas was an amazing school you know, and I, I'm from Texas, I'm, you know, from here, not originally, but I've been here since I was really young. And I used to hang out in Austin all the time. So I kind of wanted him to experience that whole Austin thing. And then, um, you know, there were a couple of other schools that um, he wanted to go to, but we really wanted it to be his decision. So if he asked us about it, we would tell him, but Miles was really good. I mean, he kept notes. He, he researched all the schools. He kept notes on everything. So I think that it was really a decision that he made on his own, but I think he, I mean, I know, I know that he was um, really glad that he chose to go to UT. Who went to do the school visits with him? So it just depends on, it depended on how David and um, my schedule work who could get off at the time, who had most vacation time. Uh, David went to most of them, uh, but we, we did a couple together, and then David went to most of them, but I went to a few too. What was that experience like to go on different campuses for, you know what I mean, and, and try to figure out the college life for your son? Um, it was great. Um, of course, everybody treated us amazing. I mean, you know, when, when you're there, everybody treats you great. We wanted to make sure that Miles went to every visit possible, even if he had if he knew in his mind what school he really wanted to go to, 
we wanted to make sure that he went to every school possible and, and really enjoy that um, that process because it's like kind of a once it's not kind of it's definitely a once in a lifetime thing and not everyone gets to experience that so that's the kind of approach we took to it well that's amazing because you have to find that program that fits him right something right. somewhere where he's going to be comfortable and be okay with being away from home and because it's not easy for everybody mm -hmm. it really no. isn't no. well he chose the university of texas what was that like mm -hmm. for him it was good. I mean, um, like I said, we were far enough away that where he can do what he wants to do. And we've really raised our kids to be very independent. Um, and um, I feel like he's been a responsible young man for, you know, for a long time. And and we've uh, it was a good experience for him. He was far enough away, but two and a half, three hours away if you drive it. And um, but close enough if he ever really needed anything, you know, so um, it was he, he loves Austin, loves the University of Texas, you know, learned a lot from um, uh, the coaches. So, yeah, it was good. It was a good experience. What were the games like? Oh, the games were amazing. Um, you know, I think so when Miles, um, when he, you know, made his decision, um, he wore a bucket hat. Um, and so, like, those bucket hats were the, the, the co-op in Austin had um, those bucket hats and they were called the recruit hat. Mm -hmm. And um, it was pretty cool because everybody wore the bucket hats and, um, you know, everybody knew who we were, but nobody, we, they didn't bother us or anything. But they were great. They were exciting. I mean, this is seeing our son, you know, kind of living his dream early. You yeah. know, it was amazing. Did you see NBA in his future at that point? Sure, we did. Um, but what I, I didn't find this out until probably just a few months ago, um, like, I didn't realize that he didn't. I mean, he did, but he was just like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. If I, it wasn't that he didn't know if he was ready. I think he just wanted to spend another couple of years at UT because it was it's a party school. <laughs> 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 so I think that's, no, not really. But the uh, yeah, we definitely saw it. So our deal was that, you know, if you're potentially a lottery pick, we felt like that was his opportunity and we didn't want him to miss it. But if he wasn't a lottery, wasn't a potentially a lottery pick and he, you know, we would encourage him to stay. But again, these were his decisions to make. And um, yeah, that was kind of one of the things with Miles. He was like, you know, maybe I need to stay in a little bit longer to get a little bit more experience. And um, that's what he was thinking. But like I said, my, my husband knew early on and that he was ready, really ready. Well, he was also, um, well, he was highly recruited. He played in the McDonald's All-American. Mm -hmm. um, he played Team USA, mm -hmm. um, 2014 uh, FIBA Americas under 18, and mm -hmm. they won the gold. They won the title. Yeah. How was that for you as a mom to see your son play against just other countries and also qualifying for the FIBA 2019 games? It was really amazing because, like, Miles has kind of always been like, um, what I, what, you know, he's kind of always been under the, the wire. He's kind of always mm -hmm. been like, people don't, you know, really expect certain things out of Miles. So when he goes out there, and what a lot of, I'm, a lot of people don't know that Miles actually broke the uh, shot blocking record then, and no one since then has broke, broken his record. Yeah. So he holds um, the record for sh block shots um, with that, um, with FIBA under 18 so and that was pretty cool because he was he's going out there and doing work and he's just the type of player that all he wants is for his team to win right. you know so he is definitely a team first guy and um i'm very competitive i didn't play any competitive sports or anything like that but like in in life in general i'm very competitive so i'm the one that's like yeah you i want you to do this and i want you to do that and he's like we gotta win first mom we just gotta win first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, he's he's very selfless, and he, um, so the fact that he was out there and really, I mean, like there were a couple of guys that that they wanted to start over Miles and all that kind of stuff, and and Miles just you know he was he was there just ready to win, and um, I respect that about him, you know, a lot personally. I respect that about my son that he's a team first guy and he just wants to win. So that right. that's really what I I really got to see that then, and he's just carried that to to now being in the NBA. Take me through draft preparations. What did he do to get ready? And then what did you as your family collectively do to get ready? 
So Miles, um, actually, he went to um, training in, uh, in in Vegas. There's a there's a gym there in Vegas that he went to, and it, he he did really well. I mean, I mean that that where he went got him ready. Um, he I think he surprised himself how really ready he was. I think that's when he finally saw, okay, I'm ready for this. You know, when he went through the draft training, excuse me, draft training, and got the drills right and got you know. We, we were pretty good with the fact that when he goes in and does the interviews with all the um, with all the teams that he would do good on that that he would do really well on that so we weren't worried about that too much but just the prep that he took getting his body ready I, I was really proud of him on that so he did well there the family what we did was just you know we made sure that um, we were ready just by mentally and emotionally being ready for the highs and the lows of it you know and um, there um, were a couple of people that reached out to us to kind of help us through. And, and that was a good, good thing too. But we, we kind of made sure that we stuck together as a family, because when you're going through that process, it's easy to kind of be pulled in different directions. And then people, you know, how do you say it? People just, they, they, they're buying to be there first. You know, they're buying to handle you first. And, you know, so we our, our goal was just to make sure that we stay together. David actually went there and was at with him during the entire training process. Like they had an apartment. He Miles had an apartment and David had an apartment and he was right there the whole time. So um, and of course, I stayed here with my with our daughter, Maya. So yeah. Yeah, she's in school and everything. So. So let's get to draft night. What was that like for you? Look, tell me all about it. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you draft night. You can just, this is where you can tell that I'm just really green on this kind of stuff. Cause all right. Well, so getting everybody ready, it's, you know how it is when you're, when you're going through all the, the, the draft things before actual, actual draft night. Yeah. So the day, the, the day of the draft, I'm so glad that I actually finished getting ready. Cause I, they said, you're going to be in the green room. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to get be in the green room and I can finish my hair and I can finish putting on my makeup. And I even bought snacks in my bag for everybody and, you know, <laughs> waters and everything thinking we were going to be in this room. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't. We were right there yeah. where, the cam <laughs> where the cameras were. And I was like, Oh my God. It's not I green in here. <laughs> nice and green, and I just felt like Ellie Mae with my big sack of food. <laughs> no, but it was. I'm so glad I prepared, you know, because I was like, oh no, I'm gonna put my makeup in before I go. <laughs> Not wait till I get into the green room. <laughs> so that was almost a mistake. <laughs> but I had to. I and when Miles was got called and he came over to um, to hug me, I almost tripped on my bag of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> bag of uh, skittles <laughs> right. the best. i thought you know we're gonna be in the green room so you guys might get hungry so I <laughs> for a true mom at heart yeah yeah that's it <laughs> so, i love yeah. that no it was it was good though it was a good process it was fun and then i i met um a lot of people like um robin paul she's um really mm -hmm. Man, she's just really been a huge uh, a mentor to me because I met her that night. And um, anytime I have anything, I'm able to call her. And um, she's just amazing. So, yeah, it was and a good she process. She is. Yeah. She is. <laughs> well, Miles was chosen 11th overall mm -hmm. to the Indiana Pacers in 2015. Mm -hmm. The chances were extremely high that his name was going to be called that night. But as a parent, are you really ever prepared for that moment to see your son walk across that stage? No, I'm not. We we weren't. And you, I don't. I we weren't prepared for it. Everything just comes at you so fast. And mm -hmm. like I said, when I was talking about, you know, trying to be, be ready for it, that was part of our preparation. We just knew that we were, no matter what, we were going to stick together and we were going to be there for each other. And my husband is like the the opposite of me. David is all. He's calm. He's very assured. He's calm. And I'm like, you know, okay, let's do this. All right. We got it. You know, I'm always trying to, you know, go the next step, but right. David's like, just everybody calm down. We got this. And so, yeah, it, it was a, it's, it was crazy, but, but with him being drafted to Indiana. Yeah, it was, I think, I think that was, it was, he got drafted to the perfect city for miles, you know, just the perfect city because, um, 
you know, some of the guys that were drafted even ahead of him, they didn't, they weren't able to able to start immediately and they weren't able to get into the swing of things. So I think Indiana needed miles and he filled that need. And I think that he even excelled. So. So let's talk about the first time you walked into the bankers field life field. Sorry. The bankers life field house arena mm -hmm. to watch mm -hmm. your son play a game, like share your thoughts and feelings about everything you observed on that very first game. So, I mean, to be able to, you know, describe his dream, but of course, David and I were together. So I'm, there's two things going on. My, my, my husband is a basketball purist. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and to see David so proud of his son and his, and, and Miles just really going out there and excelling, you know, when, no matter what your child does, you know, as far, my, my dad used to say, I don't care what you do, but you better be the best at it, you know? And I think Miles has that attitude and that um, work ethic. And just to see him go out there and excel and just flourish that way, it was amazing. And it just feels so good. And so everything that you had to go through to get him here, you know, you don't take vacations when you have a, chi a, a child in, in Miles's position because you have to travel for AAU games. You know, you don't um, you don't spend a lot of money on other things because everything has to go to that, you know, um, right. getting him to where he is. So everything was worth it because he was there fulfilling his dream. It was amazing. As a child, you bought him a regular sized basketball goal. Not even the Fisher Price one. Which was <laughs> 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 and he played. A lot of one-on-one -on -one with his dad. He played a lot of horse with his dad. But what made Miles fall in love with basketball? You know, I, I, I've never asked him that question before, but Miles is very competitive. That's where Miles does take after me. I mean, like, he's highly competitive. I think the competition, you know, and, and Miles really likes um, excelling. He likes winning. So... And that's what that's what's good, you know good about his situation because like I said he'll he will sacrifice himself and his own accolades and his own stats in order for the team to win. Mm -hmm. Now that's not what I like, but because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sacrificing. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm, I don't play professional sports. Okay, <laughs> that's my. But I'm. It, it makes me so proud proud that he does that though. You know. I mean, because that's really, that is how you win. Yeah. You know, you, you win as a team. As a team. You don't absolutely. win as, as an individual. Mm -hmm. And he, he recognized that in a long time, in junior high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking back now to the beginning, what are some of the great resources that have helped you along the way? Okay, so like I was, uh, when we got to the league, of course, I was talking about Rob and Paul, who's amazing. Yes. Um, however, we... Um, Miles uh, had a a coach who was that he's had since he was well we've known uh, um, Ken Roberson and everybody calls him Slim. Um, we've known him for before Miles was born, but he, you know he's trained people like we just happened to run into him one day and David and him became really good friends before Miles was even born. And um, but what we didn't know is that he actually has trained. Um, uh, uh, he worked with like. Carl Malone, and he worked with Chris Bosch and a couple of other players, like a couple of the other bigs. And right. so he was able to train our son um, as far as his um, the his running and, and all that kind of stuff. So, and even like just everything. So, so Slim was a huge resource for us. And um, yeah, we, and we absolutely love Slim. But um, just, you know, look, you have all these coaches that are re reaching out to you. So we started using them as resources. Right. You know, you, you know, they're there, you know, they're, they're trying to reach out to you and trying to get you on their team. So you might as well use them as resources and get all the information you can about them and ask them questions. Don't just let them come in and control the narrative of your child's, you know, experience. Right. So we started doing that. And, um, and then like knowing certain being on AAU teams, knowing certain people, like we were talking about the fact that Miles couldn't fit into any shoes or, or his clothes. Miles literally had no shoes. So we've reached out to people like Chris Bosch, 
Chris Bosch sent him a bunch of pairs of shoes and even like a couple of suits and stuff like that because he kept growing out of stuff. I mean, yeah. it's, we, we could buy it, but he kept growing out of stuff too. Yeah. And that's why Miles is really big into um, it, anything that he has. He makes sure that he passes it on to other you know, big young men in high school that might need it too. He's really, really into that because that was a huge um, help for us when we needed it. Now that he's a pacer, do you ever speak with other pacer parents just to, just for guidance or other things? Well, Miles actually is, um, <laughs> he's the longest tenured pacer as of right now. So I, um, I'm the one that people can talk to now, <laughs> yeah. but when, um, when he was new, I did have, um, Paul George's mother, um, was a really good um, person to talk to. We talked all the time. And, um, but the, the, the moms now get together, the pacer moms get together, all the, pa the, the moms from the guy's mom, the player's mom, we get yeah. together, you know, well, before the pandemic, we would get together at least once a season and hang out mm -hmm. and, and, and kind of just, you know, talk, talk to each other. Oh, that's nice. Because, like, you're building, yeah. like, that that sisterhood. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? All your sons are be playing together, so it's 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 nice to be able to have somebody else on that particular team, you know what I mean, yeah. just to speak to. And, I mean, I do. I mean, I, I speak to other Magic Moms all the time. Yeah. And, and especially during the games. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's the best time. <laughs> that's when we have all our comments. We're texting yeah. away or, or we're waving yeah. across the, the arena or something, but... <laughs> yeah. That's Definitely. the best time. It's just a different family, right? Yep. At what moment did you just stop and realize and 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 say Miles is where he aspired to be and, and playing basketball? Like you know, it's where well Miles aspired to be where he is. Of course, to play basketball, but like I didn't realize how much Miles wanted to really put us in a position to be better, you know, financially better. OK, so he, he bought we, he bought us a house. He bought he purchased our family home a couple of years ago. And like, honestly, every time I walk through the door of our family home that Miles purchased for us, I am I have a feeling, you know, I, it's like, wow, that, you know, and yeah. I don't mean to say it at, like as a material thing, but I know how important that is and was to him. Of course. But, you know, and so those are the moments because, yeah, I see him every time he plays. I know he's fulfilling his dream I, every time he plays. But the fact that he was able to do that meant so much to him. And it makes me so proud. You know, it just makes me so proud. And and, and I'm just really I feel very, very blessed. Very I was blessed. just going to say that it's such a blessing when, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, when, when the kids recognize where it all began, where it all started and they give yeah. thanks to you know, to that theory. Well, and, yeah. And I didn't realize that he told me later, like, um, I guess I had had some paperwork out on a, a counter or somewhere that he didn't realize that I had to go into our, my 401k to make sure that we were traveling and he got right. to the places and stuff. And he saw that and he was in shock. He was like, you know, you, you basically, you you went, you, you spent your retirement on me. You know, and I think that's I think that was kind of a motivation for him too, you yeah. know, to, to do this. And I'm, that's good. That's a good motivation. So, well, I mean, they're kids, right? So they don't know where the money mm -hmm. comes from. They just right. see themselves in the car. You know what I mean? Right. On that 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 drive to wherever they have to go, and they see themselves in the uniform and and in the shoes that you know the parents miraculously found whether it was right. hand me downs whether it came from like you said Chris Bosch doesn't matter the fact is he right. still had those shoes or yeah. whatever right. and they never think well where did all this come from it's just natural right. you're the mom or you're the dad you're supposed to get it right until and they're that, actually that, yeah yeah exactly and, and that, that, that's just a good feeling you know that you're right they're actually growing up and they're seeing that oh look you know what these are the sacrifices that are being made to get you to where you're at. And, and that's a good feeling. Yeah. yeah. The path to the NBA is not the same from one player to another. Some have it easier where they are that high school or college sensation, the one and dones drafted high and having good uh, careers out the gate. But then mm -hmm. you have players whose routes just take a little bit longer 
Um, mm-hmm. They have to go through the G League or they have to go overseas to get back to the NBA, which was my son's case. Mm-hmm. Had you and I met years ago and I approached you about my son's path, what advice would you have given me from one mother to another? Okay, so my advice to you would be to, I, I know I've said this a lot, but it's so important that you stick, make sure that your son understands the importance of sticking together as a family, mm-hmm. okay? When you're making decisions, you trust your mother and your father. Trust your mother if that's the case. Trust your mother and father if that's the case, but trust the people who got you here, okay? Because I do know on their path, there are a lot of situations where there's a tug and a pull, tug and a pull, tug and a pull. And those can be wrong, um, that you can get a lot of wrong um, information that way. You can get a wrong, a lot of wrong advice that way. So that would be number one. And um, keep your circle small. Keep it small. And um, uh, just you can't let everybody in because everybody, they don't have great motives for you. And, you know, know who you let into your circle. Those are the two biggest things for me. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, for me, it was it was brand new, this whole Oh, your son is, you know what I mean? He he's he's great and he has such great talent and he could end up in the NBA one day and then he goes to college and all of a sudden his friends, friends, these are like students like him and they became instant agents overnight and they would they yeah. would call me and tell yeah. me what my son needed to do and and I would sit there and think you have zero business experience but all of a sudden you're a business manager and yeah. it was just too much and then I would have even adults that would just come out of the blue and yeah. they would they would tell me all these things and and after a while I was like yeah I'm just gonna have to like start cutting people off yeah just definitely. because the intent isn't the same right they saw my son as a dollar sign for me I saw him just like well he's my son and he has yeah. such you know what I mean like he's great at what he does and there's a possibility of him actually getting paid for this let's right. let's work this angle where the people that were coming at me they saw the same thing but they were looking at them getting paid Right, exactly. And there, yeah. everyone, there's a cost for everything. Yeah. There's just a cost for everything. There's there, no one's doing this just to be nice. Yeah. Thank you. No one's yeah. doing this just to be nice. So I used to say that and, all the time. <laughs> yeah, and we just, you know, that, that that's so. There have been a couple of occasions where that's my we have run into as a family, an NBA family, where it's so important that Miles knew that. Let me talk to my parents about this first. You know, let me talk to my parents about this first because it could have it could have been bad, you know. So Yeah. But it's good that he it's knew just, to it's go a, back it's a to business. Him. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And a lot of a lot of kids don't know that it's a business. They don't realize it. They just want to get on the court. So it's right. good that he understood that, hold on a second, I, I trust them. Let me go back to them. Where you have a lot of kids that just figure, oh, they're their mom and dad, they don't know. Right. And so let me ask yeah. somebody else. Well, and and it, here's the deal. So David and I actually work for Miles, okay? And this was our, you know, our thought on that. We're, we're from the business world. We both um, have business experience, like tw- 25 years of, of business experience, and David probably has 30. So we were, our, I've had a couple of moms ask me, well, what do you do? What do you do for him? I'm like, I, whatever needs to be done. Because, mm-hmm. like, why would, why would I pay someone else to do that for him when I can do it? Right. Why would I pay someone else to do it? Right. Um, that's just it. And it, we, we don't do things that we don't have experience in. We don't handle his finances, but someone has to oversee all that. Right. So, of course, my husband, you know what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that even though we work for him, you know, we're, we're, our, we're not experts in certain things. Right. We let the experts handle that. Right. But however, on the day-to-day and all the bas- business and stuff that happens, we can handle that. Absolutely. So why would we pay other yeah. people to do that? No, it doesn't make sense. And what, yeah. I, in my opinion, the, the way um, your family handles that just makes more sense. I mean, you keep it in the family. Like, why not employ your own yeah. family? I mean, that's that's where the trust level comes in, right? Right, exactly. So, so with that said, both you and your husband have instilled great value in Miles and have spent the time making sure that he got re- – required training that he needed to help him to play basketball on a professional level. With that said, do you have high expectations for Miles 
off and on the court? Well, on the court, I think that Miles is going to take care of business because I think, like I said, he's he's just a win first guy. I mean, you know, I'm saying he he likes yeah. to win. And I think he's got such tremendous work ethic. So I'm not worried about that on the court. But off the court, of course, we expect him to we expect him to be um, a leader, you know, someone that um, he, that people can look up to. You know, he's young, so he's going to make mistakes and yeah. that's OK. You know, I mean, I made plenty of mistakes that he's going to be he's 24. I made plenty of mistakes at 24. Yeah. And. I make sure that he knows that. And David makes sure that he knows that. We don't expect perfection, okay? But we do expect him to be a respectable young man. Yeah. And to, you know, remember his home training. I expect, We expect that. Absolutely. And yeah. sometimes we have to hold our kids to that, right? Yeah, we do. And um, I think that um, Miles, um, I think he does a good job. He's done a good job as, of, of that so far, you know, and um, we're proud of him. This has been a tough year for everyone. Yeah. Has this pandemic allowed Miles to put things into perspective and make changes to his life that he may have not done otherwise? So, yeah, this pandemic has been really fun because, <laughs> fun <laughs> because um, first of all, Miles and his, and his two um, assistants, um, they, they quarantined with us. Um, the, you know, the, in the first part of the big quarantine and everything, that was fun because <laughs> it wasn't, yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'm just kidding. It was good. I mean, it was fun because it was nice because they were home and they were safe. Um, and so what we didn't realize either is that, um, in March, Miles had actually, um, had COVID last mm -hmm. March, right? Okay. No, 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 no. It, it, no, I'm sorry. It was last, like last December yeah it was December he had actually had it because he called me and he was like mom you know I'm, I'm like oh, I can't breathe all that well I feel like I have the flu well they took they didn't test him for it though because nobody knew about it right so but what happened is that when he, they were tested he had the antibodies so he was because he was out for like two weeks and for, for a game it started in Portland and he was out for like two weeks with it but what happened is um so he, he had the antibiotic antibodies. The, the friends came in, him and his dudes came in, quarantined with us. We learned a lot about him then. But I'm going to tell you, from day one, he worked out every day. He stayed ready. He worked out every day. Um, they did. They tried so hard to be safe, you know, because we had to create our own little bubble. But you know, they and and I, they did a really good job of it too because that's the fun part. They didn't go out. They didn't go. You know, because Texas was really still open. They could have went out and partied and did anything that they wanted to do. But they stuck by the rules, and we were real proud of them for that. But yeah, so it was a real challenge. But they did it. But I was really proud of them because they worked out every day. They stayed ready, and yeah, it was it was good. But I was glad when they were called back. So yeah, <laughs> I was really glad when they were called back. Well, finally, it was work. yeah. <laughs> work <laughs> let's learn some fun facts about miles okay what is that go-to dish that you make that he absolutely loves so my go-to dish for miles would be um so i make carnitas and um I, he re they really like them so um yeah just like either pork or, or beef carnitas they love excuse my ignorance what is a carnita so it's like a shredded, it's like a taco, a shredded, um, like beef taco. And yeah, but you oh. make it from scratch and it's, it's a kind of a process to do it, but they love it. And, and then they, they like, I, I make whatever, like my greens and my, any kind of soul food they love. So, so if miles were home now for dinner, that's what it would, that's what it would be. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cause he doesn't. Yeah, definitely. It would be. Like, it was kind of a bummer because, like, when everybody um, got together for dinner, um, you know, we, he couldn't eat, like, he has a private chef. He couldn't eat the things that we were eating because he had to, you know, weigh in and had to do all that kind of stuff. He was like, I just, I just don't even want to be here. Because <laughs> <laughs> so I want everything that's here. No, but yeah, so it would be, um, yeah, it would be that. Yeah. I was actually following his journey with his private chef. Good for him for keeping it healthy. Yeah. And the yeah. stuff she's that amazing. she is. Yeah, she's amazing. You know, like she, um, she's a chef. She's a nutritionist. She's, 
she's the package, man. She's amazing. And she follows him where he goes. Yeah. I yeah. Like, what? Mm-hmm. She was in China. I was like, wow. No, that's she a was chef. In China. <laughs> and you know, the thing is too, one good thing that happened is that, um, um, she will call the, the hotels and say, Hey, this is what miles can have. And she'll, she, she, she plans out his meals that way too. It's really cool. Wow. Yeah. She's good. What was one item as a child that he could not live without? So of course, Legos and any kind of puzzle thing. He loved Legos and puzzles and um, building things. And like, uh, he had a train set that we could, we had to keep adding to and building on. So. Okay. What was your childhood nickname for him? So I would call him Momo or I would call him um, Milos. My, my mother, um, um, my mother uh, had, oh, she was part German. And so she would always call him Milos. So that was her thing. So we called him Milos. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> now we want to ask some tips and advice. Okay. What three tips would you give a mom who has to deal with a coaching decision that she does not agree with? For NBA players or for who? For does, com- for does it, okay, uh, so it's very- high school, AAU, doesn't matter. I would, my, my biggest thing, and this is where David comes in, because I would have been all over it. I would have been <laughs> that mom. Yep. But I would have been, because. but I'm so glad that David was, he was like, Mary, let the coach do what he does. This is his team. Hit, let it go. You know what? Miles is going to play how he plays. We can talk to Miles when he gets home about what he needs to do, but you leave the coaches alone. I And I feel that's so important. Well, and, you know, of course, especially in the NBA, because there's nothing you can do. Exactly. You know, they're just, they're grown men, so you <laughs> better not say anything. So even if you want to, which I, I've never wanted to go after a coach, but anyways, um, like, in the just leave them alone. I mean, you know what? Leave the coaches alone. If your kid is not excelling on that team the way you think they should be, take them off that team. Put them, you know, take them, put them on another team. What advice would you give to a player about how to deal with a tough teammate? So I would tell that player to concentrate on his role, you know, it's not like stay in your lane. It's kind of like that, but you can't do that when you're playing competitive sports. But you know what? Concentrate on your role. You know what? You might have a talk with them and say, hey, what's going on? Try to get to the bottom of it. But I would say concentrate on your role. Do do, do what you're supposed to do Yeah, and do it that way. Is that the same advice you'd give to Miles? If he came Absolutely. home one day and said, let me see, who was a pacer? Victor is just driving me nuts. He's not passing the ball and he's very difficult with me. Oh, you're talking about the NBA. Okay. So, okay. No, I mean, there's, there's different things that the, um, I guess there's different things. I mean, I, we've never, you know, dealt with anything like that because like I said, look, you probably shouldn't even be getting into stuff like that because like my mom did not tell me what to tell my coworkers, you know, you know, you, that's their job. They should just be handling their job. I mean, so, and that's what Miles considers when he goes and plays back. He's like, this is my job. This is, look, here's the thing. Miles is a sinner, okay? He's a natural sinner. But last year and even this year, he's, play, he's playing, he's being a forward. He's mm-hmm. never done that before. But his bosses ask him to do that. So that's why he has to do that, okay? Right. So he's making the best of it. I mean, eventually he's just going to just flourish in that position because he's playing. It's going to be better for him in the end because he can be a center and a forward. Okay. But the thing is, is that that's your job. You go in there and do the job you get paid to do. If you could only give one piece of advice to another courtside moms, what would it be? My advice would be no over anything your relationship with your child and making sure that it's solid is the most important thing because everything leads to that. If you have a solid relationship with your son or your daughter, um, who's in this, in, that's in the league, they're always going to come back to you. I mean, if you have that relationship where it's them over their contract, it's them over everything, they're going to come back to you for everything. So 
just make sure that relationship is solid and make sure your your child knows that they're more important than money you know i mean i i, I because what is what else what what else is there other than your children mm-hmm. you know what else is there in your in your in your in your mate you know what are you, what mm-hmm. else is there that's all yeah. you're absolutely right i mean at the end of the day you know we they still need their parent Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mom is mom. Right. Well, that's awesome advice, Mary. And thank you so yeah. much. You're welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming on the show and being our courtside mom today. Thank you. I'm <laughs> looking forward to it. I appreciate you. <laughs> I wish you and your family the happiest holidays ever. And please be safe out there. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mary. You. Take thank care. You. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Courtside Moms and make sure you subscribe to the podcast. I do it naturally, baby.